Thank you. Um, the Governor of the Bank of England has said that, um, that quantitative easing is a monetary tool like any other. Do you agree with that? <laughs> um, like any other um, is probably an interesting expression. Um, I, he also said, as, you know, as, as I mentioned, that it is unconventional. So I suppose by definition, if it's unconventional, it's not really like any other. Um, but I do accept that uh, it is a mon it's being done for monetary policy reasons. And in the same way as interest rate decreases and increases have effects on the yield curve um, and on the level of yields, uh, certainly QE does too. But would you agree that um, when you are intervening in what is an open and an unfettered and highly liquid market, that it's not the same as simply changing interest rate levels? Absolutely. So, for example, the Governor has told this committee that the day that we all pray for, when the economy turns around and is in danger of overheating because we're all growing so fast and doing so well economically, is the day he will raise interest rates by a quarter of a percent and then start unwinding the asset purchases. And would you agree that, that, that unwinding the asset purchases is not exactly the same as raising interest rates? Yes, I do. And what do you think is the difference? What do you think is the, the difference between him raising interest rates by a quarter of a percent and then another quarter and then another quarter versus him raising them by a quarter of a percent and then saying, right, well, hey, I'm now going to offload, whether it's on a programme trade or whatever, um, a third of the entire debt of the UK government? Well, were he to do that, were the MPC to, to decide to do that, that to me seems a to represent a very strong form of monetary policy tightening and quite a dramatic form of monetary policy tightening. And that is what he has told this committee he will do. And when challenged on that point, he has said it's the same as raising interest rates. So you don't agree with that? It's not the same. I mean, I don't agree with that. I think it's, I think, and, and I'd be interested to know, do you think that it would have the effect if the market saw that the Bank of England was a seller of a third of the outstanding gilt debt of the UK, that that would dramatically change the yield curve overnight? If there were an, announce an announcement that the Bank of England intended to sell the entire asset purchase fa fa facility portfolio, which they've now accumulated with gaps over a period of three years, that would most certainly have an effect on the market. Yeah, okay. But I would assume that he would want that effect on the market, otherwise it's not quite clear to me why they would want to sell all of it in one go. Well, only because the Governor has told us that would be his strategy. He has very clearly said that he would raise rates and then he would unwind. Okay, so obviously I'm putting you under a lot of pressure here, but then can you then talk us through, because um, equally we had a bit of a um, discussion about the fact that if I buy a gilt for 98 pence in the pound and then I sell it at 92 pence in the pound, I would appear to have made a loss of six pence in the pound. And the governor says that that's not in fact the case because it's all circular. And I wonder if you could explain why um, the taxpayer doesn't make a loss in that scenario or whether I'm just misunderstanding and in fact the price won't go down if the yield goes up. I, um, to a certain extent, I, 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 sort of, I really must say that's probably one for the bank. But I, I think that a couple of points which, um, if you like, there's some economic theory behind that, and I'm not an economist, um, and that is presumably that the benefits to the overall economy, and that I believe was the point which he was trying to make, that the benefits to the overall economy um, through increased economic growth, which in itself uh, has necessitated selling the portfolio and tightening monetary policy, cancel out the potential losses to the exchequer that would occur because the, the Treasury has indemnified the bank for any losses arising out of the QE portfolio. OK, I feel that he meant it more mechanically than that, and I wonder if you could talk us through the accounting changes, because, in fact, what the Governor was saying was that um, because the Bank of England's um, purchase of assets, of gilt assets, was against an electronic credit to the um, seller, 
so in other words that's where the creation of money comes from that therefore when you come to sell the gilts you're simply cancelling off something that was only a book entry anyway and that it's all circular and I wonder if you can just talk through that because presumably the DMO as an alternative could buy the gilts back from the Bank of England itself um, as I'm, one alternative is, is that correct I mean when when he comes to be a seller you could say we'll buy that debt if the UK was in a position to redeem some of its own debt is that technically correct or is I don't think right? it is in as much as what the bank has done is conducted its purchases in the secondary market yeah we are active in the primary market as the issuer so yes, but issuers can always can always buy back their own debt from the market, can't they? We could, but if we've got a financing requirement, we're going to have to refinance that those purchases somehow. Yes, that's certainly true. But if the UK economy was in a position to redeem some of that debt rather than sell it back into the secondary market, as a technical point, you could buy it. I would have to, to be honest, I'd have to discuss, you mentioned the accounting uh, factors, I'd have to discuss those with colleagues in the Treasury. I. I honestly don't know. And to me, as I say, for us to be in that position, presumably we'd have to be in a surplus position, in a considerable surplus position, to be able to do that in the first place. That would be my presumption. Um, I would suggest we're a long way from, uh, from that at yes, the moment. Yes, well, absolutely. Well, what I'm trying to get at, though, is the fact that the Governor says there won't be a loss. And what I'm failing to understand is how, if I'm the Governor and I've bought gilts at 98, and then I sell them at 92 or 95 or whatever I sell them at, why have, I, why have I then not made a loss? And you can't shed any light on that. I can't. I think that question probably really should be put to probably the bank and the Treasury as well. Okay. So um, then, and to Mr Garnier's point about um, you would not feel at all uncomfortable, because the key point here is that if, as we all assume, the UK is still going to need to be borrowing and therefore you aren't being wound up and told thanks very much, we no longer need you because we've no more debt to issue. So therefore you will still be issuing debt the day that the government is selling gilts into the secondary market because you can't buy them. So you can't simply redeem them and then reissue something on behalf of the UK government. Is, is that correct? I mean, in theory, I suppose we could, but it doesn't seem to me to be the most you know, for, the, for, for us to repurchase debt and just to reissue debt seems to, to be a, a very circular thing and I'm not convinced it would be the most efficient way of us also achieving our debt management objective of minimising the cost of what we are currently having to issue. No, but I think what I'm getting at is surely you should be considering it because if, as I think you agreed, a programme trade to sell a third of the outstanding gilt debt of the UK into the market is going to have a significant impact on the yield curve at a time when we're just now all rejoicing that the economy is recovering. So the alternative is that the DMO redeems it, buys it back from the Bank of England or simply waits until it matures. I mean, we haven't discussed what the average maturity date is of the debt. But then, presumably, if you redeemed it, you could then, in a more orderly fashion, increase your gilt auctions, could you not? Or am I completely missing the point? Well, what I would say is, again, it would add to our own financing requirements. So my guess is that the impact on the overall level of yields would be the same, regardless of whether we were buying these back in the market or whether the bank was... Uh, was selling them and we will still you would have to just add it to our overall borrowing program um, and uh, it seems to me that either way you're looking at a higher yield scenario either way so okay so has the DMO assessed with the Bank of England the mechanisms the choices for unwinding the QE programme when the time comes? We've only discussed on a very basic operational level, um, you know, what potentially might have to be done, um, because those are decisions that the MPC reserves entirely for itself, and, and they will not discuss with us, um, if, if you like, uh, timing or uh, speed or, uh, you know, quantum of their sales were they so to choose. So all we've discussed, if you like, are the actual mechanisms. But what they have said 
uh, and I repeat, and I think Paul Fisher himself has been on record as saying this too, uh, is that any sales would be conducted in a programmatic fashion. In other words, to try and condition the market, rather than just dumping all the gilts in one go, that they will have a programme, if you like, the mirror of what we have, a programme in terms of selling gilts as well. Um, so are you saying that you have or you haven't discussed with the bank the, 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 the way in which that will be done? so as to fit in with what you, you yourselves are trying Not to do? Not in any great detail, no. And do you think that that would be a good idea to do that? Close, this, this to, closer to the time, I'm sure, and we stand ready on our side to speak to the bank when they choose that they want to talk to us about it. But isn't it the case that if you're getting yourself into uncharted territory on a programme that no government has ever done before, that you should think about the exit before you walk down the blind alley? And all we're doing is more and more QE, and still it appears nobody has actually considered the mechanism by which you get out of it. Again, um, and I accept the point, but I really think it has to be directed towards the MPC and to the bank, and not to us. Okay, well, I mean, I would just like to make the comment that I think the DMO is absolutely integral to all of this, and I think it should be as um, incumbent upon you to raise this with the bankers, vice versa, because it will impact on your ability to fulfil your programmes when the time comes, whenever it is. Thank you, Chairman.